My pastor was teaching us about the Jabez prayer, and I had never heard about it. So I started praying it, asking God to enlarge my territory. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my border, and that thy hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, and that it might not pain me. And I went to my post office box one day, and there was an envelope, nothing inside, from Africa. And when God told me to open it, I said, there's nothing in it. It was from a 17-year-old boy in Ghana, West Africa, Anthony Tay. Never heard of Anthony Tay. He said he was there in a village, and he was so hungry. And he said, he said to God, if you are so real, why won't you at least give me something to eat? And on the ground, at his feet, was a crumbled piece of paper that talked about the brutal rape and murder of Gloria Pointer. You know what we're about to do? We're about to get real. We're about to have conversations that Christians have behind closed doors. The scary ones. The ones that make you feel uncomfortable. That's where we're going. Why? Because we're family. Ustedes son mi familia. So this is the Brian and Janelle podcast. She's Janelle and I'm Brian. If you don't want to miss anything, all you have to do is just hit that subscribe button to get a notification whenever we drop a new episode. This is the Brian and Janelle podcast. I can't tell you how excited I am to find out what the Lord's going to do in the next hour. Yeah. Because our next guest was awarded, among many things, the Point of Light Award from former President George H. Bush. She was awarded the FBI Director's Community Leadership Award. She was a featured speaker at the Essence Award Ceremonies at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And she was awarded the Queen Latifah Project Confidence Award. Wow. She was on Oprah. Basically, she's doing you a favor to be here. Like on our <laughs> show. <laughs> yes. On our show. Follower of Jesus. Oh, man. Member of the Moody Radio family, Yvonne Pointer. Good morning. Well, now I can add to my radio, and she was on the Brian and Janelle oh, show. Oh, you stop. Oh, I'm oh, going wow. to add it to my bio. Oh. Yeah. Watch it's going to be big. No. <laughs> and, you know, there's so much I want to talk to you about today, but we got to start with just talking, acknowledging that the Lord ordained this next hour. Absolutely. And none of us know quite why, but the, the story of how you got here is actually pretty incredible, and it starts on your end of it. Yes. Uh, I do a prayer every morning, and I remember waking up on Monday feeling as if I wasn't getting a prayer through, and I needed to connect with somebody that could pray. Oh, yeah. And so God reminded me that He could hear me. So when I got in the car— I was listening to your station, but all I heard was call in and win a Bible or win something. And I picked up the phone and dialed, and when the person answered, I said, wait, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> 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 and so they said, just stay on the line. And it was a contest, and I answered mm -hmm. the questions. But then at the end, God said, give them your testimony, just yeah. like that. And, and see, there's actually more to the story, because if you back up a few steps— Somebody had called before you and was going to be the contestant. <laughs> they texted us later and said they just felt overwhelming compulsion to, like the Holy Spirit said, hang up. You're not supposed to be the contestant today. Wow. Yeah. And so they literally, Kelly's in mid-sentence talking to them, and they hung up on her. Wow. And, and that, then she talked to you. Wow. And then uh -huh. she came in the studio when we were getting ready to play the game, and she goes, yeah, our contestant, just so you know, I don't even think she knows what she's here for. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, can you imagine? So when you start asking the questions, I was like, what if I don't know the answer? I'm going to make a fool out of myself. No, oh, but, well, then whoa. let's go with what happened, Brian. You tell him. Well, you know, so Brian asked the the first question, first Bible question. She's like, uh, you don't even have to, have to finish the, the question. I know the answer. Boom. Got yeah. it right. And did the same thing with the other two. 
We were like, you need to be. In fact, somebody texted and said, can Yvonne, Yvonne be the phone a friend for Bible Brain Buster from now on? <laughs> you better run. Hey, I, I'm available. Oh, she was so I amazing. love reading the Bible. I love, oh. I love the stories. I love the word of God. And so I still, I'm still one of those people that sit with my Bible open reading. Oh. Praise the Lord. That's what yeah. we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how you get closer to Jesus is read his love letters to you. Well, you think if you've been uh, in Christ for so long, you don't have to read it. But I I like to eat it daily. Mm-hmm. And so it's such a wonderful, wonderful help. It's a source of help. And now, as we set the stage for this, I want to be sure, since we don't clearly know for what, what the Lord is going to do in the next hour, because he clearly wants this to happen, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to leave the phone lines open. Because maybe it's you that's the reason Yvonne's here today. Yeah. Because our, our discussion took a turn. We're just playing a game, having a good time. I'm. I, p- people don't see this, but I, I like raise my hand to sh- to show Ron. We got to go to the next thing because Ron gets mm-hmm. to push all the buttons. No one lets me push buttons for good reason. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> and you just you said you felt compelled to slip in your testimony. It, it was as if God Himself was speaking in my ear. He said, "Tell him your testimony." Now that's not why I was on the phone. And one thing that we get out of that, we have to, first of all, know the voice of God. And number two, be obedient. How many times have we said, something told me to call. Something told me to say it. And you don't do it. But I like to just do whatever he says when I can. Well, and God knew the only way he's going to get me to change my plan for that is by what you said. And I don't remember the exact words, but you just slipped it in real quick. Do you you recall what you said? It was like a one sentence thing. I think I said. I, you know what? I don't even remember. I know I talked about my daughter. Yes. I probably did about her death. And not to make it morbid, but some kind of way it showed that God was good. Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? I th- and I think it was connected to the power of prayer because you were praying that morning. Yes. And you mentioned that. And before we went to the break, Brian said, well, can you tell us more about your daughter? Yeah, because you can't. I mean, the Lord had you slip in that your daughter had been murdered and and— and I heard the joy in your voice, and I was like, "What are we just going to move on?" You know? well, I, and, and I, <laughs> we got to talk about this. Did I change the order of the program? Because then you said, "Well, can you stay with us a little longer?" Yeah, you and did. And then you said, "Can you pray for us?" Now I found that to be very interesting because I had just talked to God about feeling like I couldn't get a prayer through mm-hmm. for a situation that I'm praying about, and not only did God lead me to pray, but it was such a powerful prayer. I sat in the car and I wept and wept and talked to God. And I said, okay, God, you have jokes. I can see this now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, we uh, we give him a hard time, but we serve under great leadership here at this radio station. And he has guided us in the last few years to to have plans, but organize them differently so you can let go of your plans when necessary Mm -hmm. and see where the Lord's going to guide you and how long he'll guide you to talk about something. And yeah, we, we did change gears totally because God wanted us to talk to you specifically today. And the other day, we, we had a quick conversation with you about it, but there's so much we didn't talk about. Mm-hmm. And somebody's listening right now that needs to hear your story of God using pain and tragedy yes. for his glory. It's and things it's, we talk about, but we don't really believe he can do it, you know? And especially the power of prayer, because mm-hmm. one of the things you said on Monday that I think got most of us, you talk about the Lord listens and he'll prompt us to do things and... You even said it, you know, I just felt like I wasn't getting through. But there's something you said on Monday. You said, have you ever prayed or believed and trusted God in something for 29 years? Yes. Well, on December 6th, my 14-year-old daughter, Gloria Pointer, left home going to school. And on the way to school, she was abducted, sexually assaulted, and murdered. And that was in 1984? 1984. Well, if that's where the story ends, we wouldn't be here. Mm. But I got a chance to see how God used that tragedy for his glory. Uh, it was 29 years before her ca- an arrest was made in her case. And it was what happened in those 29 years that got me to Oprah or got me the award from President Bush or got me to speak at the Essence. I was really looking for a person that could do something. And, you know, I didn't think it would ever be me because, after all, who am I? But I just knew that somebody had to do something to prevent children from being assaulted and abducted. 
So I began a process of looking for that person. It was so funny. I'm writing letters. I want, I remember at the time the A team was on television and Mr. T, <laughs> I wanted Mr. T to come and say, I pity the fool that murdered Gloria. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted him to come and protect the children. But the thing about it, no one showed up. And I just kept saying to God, then I will go. Come on, come on, Isaiah. Oh, yeah. Who will go for us? That's what God does, oh, isn't yes. it, though? Who, he's, he's incredible. So I just said, yes, I'll do it, knowing that I didn't know what to do or how to do it. So it was almost as I had to be totally dependent on God to get it done. Driving out here this morning, it reminded me of the journey. It was dark, the freeway this morning. It was scary. Yeah. And that's the way this journey has been. So the whole way I'm praying, God, you guide me. You direct me. And that's what that's how it ended up being a testimony. Because here's this mother that would not give up. And Yvonne, as you were uh, talking earlier about the tragedy of your daughter's assault and murder in 1984 and how you were looking around for somebody, somebody else, mm -hmm. to be the person to advocate for kids. I thought of this Moody quote. Uh, D.L. Moody used to travel all over the place, and he was actually in Cleveland when he said this, preaching in a little church, and he would say it all over the, all over the world. He said, but the, the world has yet to see what God can do with and for and through and in a man who is fully and wholly consecrated to him. And you're a living proof of that idea, that if you just surrender to the Lord and surrender your heart and your tragedy, nobody knows what he could do. He could do anything. He can do anything. And guess what he will do? He will use whoever comes. I'm telling you, I was the most unlikely person to do this work. And God has literally taken me around the world sharing the testimony. It's almost like when Peter and John, I believe they were going into the temple and the man was begging. And they said, look on us. That's what we need to be for Christ. We need to be such an example that the people that are dying from sin, we can say, look on us and live. So a lot of times when people invite me to speak at conferences or churches, what they want to know is, how did you get through that? And I get a chance to tell them that God will see you through. Now, I don't want it to look as if it was easy or yes. simple because it wasn't. It took a lot of fasting, a lot of praying, a lot of reading the Word, a lot of trusting and believing and hoping. Because hope that is seen is not hope. I don't have to hope to be on the Brian and Janelle show. I'm here. So we have to hope for something that we don't see. And when I was believing that God was going to allow me to come face to face one day with my daughter's killer, and I would say, and he will apologize. He will say, I'm sorry. I just didn't know it was going to take 29 years. But when we stood in the courtroom that day and he said, I'm sorry, hmm. it was almost like the conclusion of the matter. But I reminded him of Joseph in the Bible when he said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good because so much good has come out of what happened until I can see where God's hand was on it. You were trusting for 29 years, and there are people listening now that are praying mm -hmm. and will never know if they'll get an answer to their prayer, whether it's the healing of a disease for a loved one or just loss and praying for closure. How did the Lord minister to you during the 29 years when you didn't know? You didn't know it was going to be, okay, I just got to wait long enough, and at 29, I'll get closure. Do you know what God did? It was service that saved my life. I'll never forget one night, I just literally said to him, I cannot go any further. Please come and get me. Come and get me. And yeah. God began to speak to me and reminded me, because I had two other children, and he, he was he's a good God. He was trying to show me the reasons that I needed to go forward. 
And I just kept saying, that's not good enough. I want out of here. Come and get me now. And I, he said, well, what about this? And I responded, that's not a good enough reason. What about that? That's not a good enough reason. And then he concluded with, then I will be your reason. I'll be the reason you get up. I'll be the reason that you go through life. And so every day that I got up, I said, God, you're the only reason I'm still here. So what are we going to do today? And when we're done, then you can come and get me. So I found that, like even being here this morning, God, you're the reason I'm here. This then gives me a purpose to keep moving forward. Lisa posted a message. She's saying, she was so blessed to hear you on Monday. Thank and you, Lisa. Yeah, she loved your excitement and your excitement for the Lord. And she needed to hear that. She says, I'm grieving the recent loss of my dad. And I find myself in a tug of war of sorts between peace and everything but peace. Well, grief is a process. What people need to do when I travel the country and speak, I say to people, it's okay not to be okay. There's Christians, we think we got to be hallelujah in the choir all the time. Mm. But there's peaks and there's valleys. There's days when the human, do you know that Jesus was fully human and fully God? So that meant that he, when we go to Hebrews, we see that we have a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Why? Because he knows what it feels like. He knows. He knows. So when, Lisa, when you are feeling those days you have a savior that you can go to. And guess what? He won't cast you aside because you're human because he understands being human. And you know, it, it's powerful when you say it's okay to not be okay. Yes. Do you still have days where you're not okay? I, this morning I wasn't okay. People think, okay, now the case is solved and mm-hmm. you can go on with your life. But Janelle, we were talking earlier, that part of, Longing for Gloria is still in there, yeah. and it rises up whenever it wants. You can be at a mall and see a parent walking with their child, and instantly you're transformed back to what you don't have. So on this morning, everything in me wanted to pull over on the side of the icy, dark freeway and just stop. Mm. That's a human feeling. So when you're going through life, you don't want to keep pressing. But guess what? I knew that if I stopped on the side of the road, I wouldn't get here. So on the days that you're feeling like I cannot go any further, you have to ask God to give you strength just to keep going. So there's days that I'm reminded of my humanness. What I wanted this morning was a chauffeur to drive me. I don't want to do it. But that's the way we are in the spirit. If I was in your place, in my own experience, and I felt in those moments where I feel like I can't go on or I can't get over it, I would feel so spiritually immature. <laughs> I would feel like guilty in the in the eyes of the Lord, like I'm not trusting him. Well, we when, grow in And grace. we don't say it out loud. Yeah, but he knows your heart. Yes. He knows so your heart. What do you tell someone? I, I, I just say the best thing you can do is be 100% honest with yes. him. Right. You know, you you just have to say, God, listen, if you don't help me, this is not going to happen. And then he gets a chance to show you his amazing grace by giving you the necessary strength. And speaking of which, he can go above and beyond anything that you can even comprehend. Because I hope that we get a chance to talk about some of the things like Africa and h- how all of this happened because God is only wanting to reveal himself if we will say, come in. You can, you can do it. Yeah, and, and you know, quickly before we get to a call, because we don't want to be too selfish, we get to hang out with Yvonne Pointer. Oh my so God. if you want to talk to her, you can. Can I stay <laughs> forever? I don't want to go. People but, are loving what she said, Brian. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. 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 So that's a welcome. That's like, yeah. if you're not okay, call us, because yeah. you're like in good company. Well, and, and it reminded me actually of one of our favorite guests and good friends is Dr. Michael Radelnik. Oh, and, wow. and And he lost most of his relatives in Auschwitz and, and Treblinka during wow. the, the Holocaust. And he reminded me, he was talking to me about something happened on his show, that he said, when it comes to believers and non-believers, there's one difference between us when it comes to suffering. Mm-hmm. And it's that Jesus is with us. We don't get rescued from suffering. 
We're in fact promised we're going to have it. But what we are promised is that Jesus is with us along the way. And, and you're a testimony of that. Well, and the, look how his glory can be manifested. Because when I look back over my life, I know that had it not been for him, I wouldn't have made it. Yeah. To be able to not only come face to face with her killer, but to go to the prison and pray with him. Mm-hmm. That's a God move. And he will manifest himself if we just ask him. You know, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's just waiting for you to say, come in. That's right. And he's such a gentleman. He's not going to kick the door in. He, You <laughs> have to invite him mm-hmm. in. Invite him into your marriages. Invite him into your jobs. Just invite him in. Patricia in Cleveland, you're on the air. I was just listening to Yvonne, and I've been following her. Um, actually, my nieces were her, uh, was her daughter's friend. And um, you never realize how many people um, things affect. The whole school and my nieces and they were so affected by this situation. But more so, uh, we looked up to Yvonne because it was amazing, her story and watching her um, uh, process this and go through this and not only advocate for her own daughter, advocate for the other children in that community. And that was so important to me, which led me to be involved in youth services at church. And um, I have a mentoring program right now, and it, she just encouraged me. Every time I see her somewhere speaking and talking, it's like, encourage you, you can go on. Because I've been thinking, I'm not good enough to do this, God. This is such a heavy burden. And then you have people like that whose the burden was even heavier, and they walk through this. And their pain, and they answered the call when God said, "Who would go?" And she answered because of her pain and her hurt. It gives you the courage to go on to know it's not about us; it's about Him, you know. And uh, I just appreciate her, and I know it's, it's going to always hurt. I mean, I lost my dad in 2010, and I'm still grieving from time to time. And then I also look at the great. This in the blessing for me being raised and having a father too. So there's joy in that as well, and there's purpose because my dad gave me the foundation. So when I look about the things that he gave me in my life, I just think about and encourage me. So I know Yvonne, your daughter is a blessing to us all. Thank you so much. To God be the glory. I I have to tell people. I said over and over. I am just an average person who serves an above average God. I, uh, people, <laughs> Write that down. Yeah, Hello. Well, yeah. People look at oh, me yeah. like I'm something and I can't find my glasses. You know, I mean, I'm so average until it's almost funny when people think when I come, okay, they have this big introduction and I stand up to the mic. I'm like, who are they talking about? Because I am so average. And people say, you always putting yourself down. I said, no, no, no. I don't want to be lifted up. The only person I want lifted up in this process is God. And that's why he chose you. Yeah, yeah. That's he knew, why he chose you. He knew, he knew when he said, I need someone who will go for us. But this person must be, if I say the word illiterate or incompetent, you know, I'm thinking that's a good act, way to describe it. But he knew that I would never take any of the glory. He knew it because I had a God experience prior to my daughter's homicide. And that's when I got to know him. And so when she was murdered, I had somewhere to go because I had, he had impacted my life and I went back to that source. An average woman serving an an above average God. Oh, I'm going to yeah. be stealing that from you, yeah. sister. Yeah, well, uh, you can have it. Well, back in 1984, <laughs> the Lord decided in his divine something. We don't understand exactly why, no. but it's for today, perhaps. Yes. That her daughter was assaulted and murdered in 1984, and she looked around for someone else to be the one he would call. But God chose Yvonne. Mm-hmm. 
we don't have a specific agenda because it's so without question that God decided that you got to be on this hour, Yvonne. Yes, he called me here. Angela in Cleveland, good morning. You're on the air. I love your guys' show. Listen to it as much as I can. Oh, thank um, you. And uh, Yvonne, you're just such a, a great asset right now to this to this show because your testimony just touched my heart so much because I found... Uh, I found the Lord early. I was 13 when I when I gave my heart over to, to Jesus. I didn't know who Jesus was as much as I do now, obviously. Um, I'm 34 years old now. But I just lost my father December 20th. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And um, it's been rough. It's been rough. But your testimony um, about your daughter has helped me realize oh, that I am on the right path. Yes. Uh, but I will say this. I lost a, a very, 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 very good friend of mine. Um when I was a high senior in high school, actually, her husband actually murdered her and oh. her cousin in front of their three-year-old son. And then he took off running and crashed into a pole and killed himself. I'm sorry. Um, yes. But the, the display of, of Jesus in this in this whole situation was 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 so powerful. And it's just, it, it just it, it's kind of like your story. You know, you, 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 you lose a daughter. Because the parents of this person, well, I was very close to also, they're my godparents. And uh, her father just displayed just the, the most the beautiful, the most beautiful way that Christ could show any, any, any human uh, glorifying him. You know, he went to this man's funeral. This was her husband. Wow. You know, this is her husband that killed her. Um, soon to be ex that same morning, they were going to divorce court. But uh, he went to his funeral and he and he kissed the mom and I mean I just he for, he forgave him I I saw I saw the the the, the forgiveness and and that and that display and it just it was so powerful to see that at a young at a young age for myself and I already had accepted Christ and really didn't know but that was a, a, that and then your testimony just solidified for me that it, it's possible to glorify God in these horrible tragedies that we have where people don't realize is forgiveness has more to do with you than with the other person yeah you know you don't forgive them for them you forgive your uh, individual so that it doesn't eat away at your life it's literally impossible to live a life with unforgiveness in your heart because it only makes you bitter there are those who are struggling with forgiveness of not just anything that has to do with Murder, it could be abuse yes. or betrayal. When you forgave, was it a moment? Was it a process? Did you feel like forgiving? Well, my search for her killer took me into the prisons because I felt that this individual was locked away somewhere. So I would go into prisons and speak and share my testimony with anticipation that he would stand up and raise his hands and repent. Wow. That's what I thought would happen. Wow. So I've been going to this one prison now over 30 years. Mm. So what I found was these inmates who were totally repentive, and they wanted forgiveness for their sins, if you will, but didn't know how to do it. So I would end up going in with all this forgiveness for and love for these prisoners. Yeah, And I thought to myself, well, if you can forgive these individuals and when you come face to face with her killer and not forgive him, then you're a hypocrite. Forgiveness just is. So I was working on forgiveness long before I met him. Mm. So when it was a process. So if you are out there and you don't feel like forgiving, God can help you with that. It is going to be a process, though. So how does the process start and how did it start for you? First of all, let me say I could forgive him because I was forgiven. There it is. That's, God that's had the for, gospel. God had forgiven me. When I tell you, my life prior to Gloria's uh, homicide was just one of redemption. God had given me mercy and grace and restored my life. So how dare I then come face to face with someone and actually, to be honest, you almost have an issue with the fact that God would forgive that person. Right. You know, how dare you forgive this person? Yeah. But his love does. So now you see that your problem is really with God. Take the person out of the equation. God loves us all. And when we get to heaven, we can ask him about what that means. But he does. So I knew that the same love and forgiveness that was extended towards me 
also was extended towards this individual. Whether I liked it or not, it's the truth. Yvonne, but you loved Gloria. Yes. You know, and the fear sometimes is when you forgive that you're okay with the big wrong that that was done not necessarily because the this person is incarcerated so he still had to go through the process of the judicial system Mm -hmm. so my forgiving him doesn't eradicate his responsibility to serve the time for the crime that he committed it just helps me not to have to go through life under that burden but see it sounds to me like the beginning of your forgiveness story is truly about the gospel. It sounds to me like it began with you realizing that you need a Savior. Did Jesus on the cross say, forgive them, mm-hmm. for they know not what they do? Mm-hmm. Here's somebody, they don't, they've beat him, they've whipped him, they've spit on him, and he had the nerve to say, forgive them. That was the perfect example yeah. of love. This thing is all about love. And when you think about uh, Gloria Pointer, I think, this is just my opinion, that there is life after death. I mean, she's been gone almost 35 years, but I believe when I look at the things that are happening, I think that she's right there with God petitioning uh, him to give me strength and guidance and to open doors like this one that we're in this morning. Amen. That brings up this question from Angela. She says, "We've got three Angelas this morning." Yeah, and I thought <laughs> it was Angela, yeah. Angela number three. She says, "You have the assurance that Gloria is in heaven with God." What can you say to a mother who lost her child and does not have that assurance at all? Well, I don't know if we are trying to assume we don't know that person is with God or mm-hmm. not. I think that when we get to heaven, it'll be the only way that we know, That's right. which then leads us to being a witness and getting people to just accept Christ while they are alive because we want to talk about eternal life to our families and living a life so that we can live again. So if you have that feeling that I don't know where my child is, that's something that you can talk to God about. Jennifer in Lorain County, you're on the air. God is so good. Amen. He's amazing. He is so good. And I I really feel it on my heart. I felt it on my heart to call in today. I um, was listening to the radio. The only reason why I'm listening is because I'm taking my son um, to school. And usually my husband uh, takes him. Mm-hmm. But this morning I took him and I heard that you were going to be on the show, Miss Pointer. And I don't know if you remember, uh, we had... Uh, spoken and met a few times at um, when I used to work at the improv and you had organized such a a beautiful event for your daughter and her memory. And at the time I was in school for uh, graduate school and now I'm a professional helper and I'm, I work with a lot of people who have terrible things that have happened and you know, it's not the uh, place to share my testimony, but I just wanted to call and say thank you. My prayer lately has been um, to cling to God. God, show me how to cling to you. And he's really spoken to me this morning through you, um, reminding me how to cling. And I wanted to say thank you. Well, you are more than welcome. See what God has done when you you live a life wholly devoted to him and you say, well, if you're not going to send anybody else, Lord, I'll go. God, you want me to go to Brian and Janelle? You want me to get up at six? You want me to get on the freeway? Are you sure? (laughs) Are you positive? And then he knows he can get a yes out of me. That's all he's want. He wants our yes. Mm. Whether we like it, understand it, or want to tolerate it, just yes. Okay, I'll do it. And it's not going to be easy. And it's not always going to be fun. And sometimes it's going to involve some of the worst tragedies we can possibly imagine. But if we get out of the way... Yes. The Lord will use us. We are his hand and feet on the earth. Yvonne Pointer is a woman of the Lord who's uh, from this this area, makes a huge difference for the kingdom out of tragedy. Her daughter, Gloria, was brutally murdered in 1984, and she decided to surrender. And the Lord has done things you can't possibly imagine through her surrender. Brian, since I'm like in charge of the show, I've made a declaration. (laughs) I hope you agree with because it's already made. 
So, Miss Yvonne Pointer is godmother of the Brian and Janelle Morning Show. What do you think about that? Yay! We don't have any awards to give, but we just did. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So don't don't be mad when I text you. Can you pray for us? But I don't want to miss the opportunity because I know you want to talk about this. Because your your testimony is one of saying, okay, Lord, if you want me, I'll go. And you were praying about something, and you got a random letter in the mail. This is one of the most incredible stories I've heard in a long time. Yes, my pastor was teaching us about Jabez, and I had never heard about it, the Jabez prayer. So I started praying it asking God to enlarge my territory. And I went to my post office box one day, and there was an envelope, nothing inside, from Africa. And when God told me to open it, I said, there's nothing in it. The long story short, it was from a 17-year-old boy in Ghana, West Africa, Anthony Tay. Never heard of Anthony Tay. He said he was there in a village, and he was so hungry. And he said, he said to God, if you are so real, why won't you at least give me something to eat? And on the ground at his feet was a crumbled piece of paper that talked about the brutal rape and murder of Gloria Pointer. Now, Gloria was murdered in 1984. He found that paper in 2003. And it wasn't even a full sheet of paper. And at the bottom of the page was my address. So he was writing to say, I'm sorry to hear about the murder of your girl child. And I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to do here? He said, I want you to feed him. How, God, do I feed him? And this is what I know about God. You don't have to know how to do it. You just have to be willing to do it. So we have confirmed that this was legitimate. We set up a way to send money for him to buy bags of rice for the village. And then the boy had a dream. And in the dream, God told him to start an organization in Ghana in memory of Gloria. So he formed the Gloria Pointer Teen Movement. And they were going all over Ghana trying to feed kids in her name. This went on, Brian and Janelle, for five years. I'm sending money. And he says, Madame Pointer, you should come to Ghana to see the work being done in your daughter's name. I don't know how to get to Ghana. I had trouble getting here this morning. I am I'm challenged. I'm telling you, I'm challenged. But God began to open the way. That's when I got the award from actress Queen Latifah. And they flew me to New York and they gave me this big monetary donation. And I flew to Ghana for the first time. And when I got there, the children were singing Gloria's name. They had banners with their name on it. And so I've been there three times now, and we have schools in the villages that are open under Gloria Pointer's name. And now I have to say this as the, the, the postscript to this. She didn't make this up. It sounds no. made up. Yeah, it does. This really happened. It happened. Wow. And it's still happening. You can actually Google it, find a Vimeo. I, I watched, the, I watched the documentary it. because there, there was yeah. a documentary made about this yes. by some local filmmakers. Yes. Right? Not even and local, L.A. They're from L.A. And we won awards. I mean, this, this thing has been documented. So if you want to know if God is still real and God is still moving, I came here this morning to tell you, yes, he is. He's doing great and marvelous things still. I just love that, that, that you go, I'm an average person. I can't find my glasses. Huh? I'm so average. <laughs> I'm so average. I don't, uh, listen, I don't know how to do anything, but God knows how to do everything. Hello, yes. So I just say, it. okay, God, I don't know what to do here. Even when I'm cooking, I'm like, God, did I put the salt in that recipe? <laughs> God, did I put the eggs in? So I'm, I'm trusting him for everything. Somebody would think you're crazy for sending money to some random guy in Ghana. Well, uh, some people would think you're crazy for trusting in a God that you can't see. Brian? Next question. Are you paying attention? <laughs> what are you doing? Right. No. So not only, you have to know his voice. My sheep know my voice. So when we, when God said, when I went back the second time to Ghana, I said, okay, God, why am I here now? He said, I want you to build a school. Okay, God, how do we build a school in God? We don't have any money. We don't have anything. And then I saw his hand again. Someone donated land. And, okay, God, we got this land. What do we do for money? And as I'm invited out to speak, 
You receive honorariums and love offerings. And God says, that's not your money. Mm. (laughs) You have to use that to send to Africa. And that takes obedience. One time, I, I remember the need in Ghana was so great and I had no more money. That that was it. I was tired of giving. I don't have any more money. (laughs) And God said, you have that suit that you purchased at Nordstrom's. And if you take it back, they'll give you your money back. And I was like, wait a minute. You want me to take my suit back? I can't have a suit? God, come on now. (laughs) You you are asking too much. I Listen, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. All the way to Nordstrom's, I was saying no. (laughs) I got out of the car, went in, and I was crying tears. And the lady said, are you okay? I said, no, I came to return this suit. You said said, no. (laughs) I I did. See, you can be honest with God. He knew. And she said, well, why are you crying? I said, because I don't want to. Uh, Well, why are you doing it? (laughs) I said, because, and I started testifying to her. I need the money to send to the kids to Africa. And I couldn't understand, why would God call me to do this? Why doesn't he just get somebody with lots of money that they don't have to turn their suits in? But God said, no, I want you to do it. And I did. But you know what? I, what's such a breath of fresh air from your story is your brutal honesty. It's just a good fit. This is why you're the godmother of Brian and Janelle Moore. I am the godmother. Right. <laughs> oh, that Because is awesome. so many Christians want to go on and talk about their story and go, what? and I had a suit from Nordstrom, so I went, and with the joy of, of the Lord, no, I went and returned no. it. You're like, no, listen, I no. tell God, what are you doing? Crying no, I the do whole no. way. <laughs> I cried. I that cried. Is, Real oh. tears. But guess what? After that, God opened the door. And a friend of mine, she started bringing me suits. I have so many suits now that I don't have room to hang them. God just wants to see, will you be obedient? He's not, he's not mean and hateful. He doesn't get any joy out of our sufferings. He has greater things for us, but he just wants to know, will you obey? That's like a child. You have children. You're not going to give your child something if they don't appreciate it or deserve That's it. That's right. So God is like, okay, I see now I can I can bless her. Because why? She's been faithful in season and out of season. Amen. We have a text coming in saying, Minister Pointer is such a blessing to the city of Cleveland. Praise 18 God. years ago, she prayed for me to become pregnant after trying for two years and even going through fertility therapy. Two months later, I was pregnant, and my son is in college now and has given his life to the Lord. She's such a blessing. Praying for you, Minister Pointer, and God's continuous blessing on your life. Listen to that. Yeah. You probably don't even remember that. No, I don't, because I pray so much. (laughs) See, there you go. But thank you, Bridget. Let's go now to Lynetta. Uh, Welcome back to the show, my friend. You're on with uh, Yvonne Pointer. Uh, Sister Pointer, I just want to just um, bless you as you have blessed us and truly know that God's word is true because he said to trust in him with our whole heart and mean not to our understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge yes, him. God. And it's about our whole heart, and that's where I'm at now in my life. And listening to you this morning, I know that um, in Christ, he said we can do all things through Christ. The hard things, the easy things. But I just want to encourage you and say thank you for being an instrument for him for a time such as this. Thank you <laughs> so much. So I just wanted to encourage you and thank let you. you know that you're in my prayers. I appreciate it so much. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm I'm convicted on so many levels here, and we're getting so many wonderful notes from folks who are being blessed by what the Lord's doing through you today. Uh, you know, our heart around here is for Jesus and yes. that people— would take that next step in their walk with Christ. Yes. And they would allow him to, as Romans 12, 2 says, to transform them into a new person mm-hmm. by changing the way they think. Because the way we regularly think without Jesus is not going to get us no. anywhere. And your story doesn't even begin with Gloria. No. Your story begins with saying, I'm a sinner who needs Jesus, and yes. I surrender my life to you. And someone told me that he would help me. And I, I said, how is that possible? So when I walked into the sanctuary that day, I was broken. And the pastor said, what's the matter? And I told him, and he said, do you believe that God can help you? And I said, I don't know if he can, but if he does, I'm going to tell it. And I had an instant transformation that day. So I know that God is real. I don't have to wonder. I know. Now, why does he do some of the things that he does? 
I don't know. And he doesn't even have to respond to me. You know? He didn't tell Job? Amen. No, no. But I know that he does exist. And, and your life is a testimony of that. Somebody needed to hear today from you that God is not necessarily going to rescue you or protect you from pain and tragedy. No, no, but what he'll use looking, it. Yeah, and he's looking for you to just fall into his arms. Yes, yes. So as, as uh, we're almost out of time here, what are your... And, and people are saying you better have her back. Or else, I'll basically. be glad to uh, come. Yeah, so, she's our I'm the godmother. godmother. Hello. <laughs> yes. I'm the godmother now. Oh, I have to come back. You do have to Madina. come back. Madina. That's how you say it in Spanish. Oh, Madina. 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 Well, and I'm also a queen mother in the village in Ghana. So I'm now the godmother. Whoa. I'm the queen mother. I'm the Madina. Madrina, yes. yes. You got a lot of titles. That's yeah. right. We're just Brian and Janelle. That's all we are. <laughs> so <laughs> what's, what are your, at least for today, for now, uh, your parting words of God-given encouragement for those who need to hear today? If God is speaking to you, do it. It may not sound like his voice, like he said to me that morning, give them your testimony. And that opened this door. So you have to say, God, I want to know your voice. And then I want to be obedient to whatever it is you want me to do. He gets no glory out of your suffering. As a matter of fact, he said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He does want you to live an abundant life. But you just have to come to him and do whatever it is he says. And let that be an amen. The godmother of Brian and Janelle Mornings, that God, yeah. we didn't even ask for this, and God no. said, you need this. And because he, gave it he to loves us on Monday. you. That's right. Yeah. And this all happened starting on Monday. So praise God for what he did this week. Yeah. And thank you for my Bible. Oh, we love you. <laughs> you got a travel mug yet? Yes, I think so. But I wanted you to sign the Bible. We want to give Bible. you more. What else do you I'll want? Take- <laughs> Ron said we should give you everything in the studio. Hi, yeah. thank you, Ron. Give it, it out. <laughs> Please let me come back. I had a wonderful time. I thank God for you. We, what, I do. I thank God for you. We're the ones you. who are blessed today. We just showed uh-huh. up. Igualmente. Yes. So, God is awesome. Godmother, we'll have you back. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. YvonnePointer.com, right? Yes. www.yvonnepointer.com. If you would like to know or invite me to your church or your conferences, that's what I do. There you go. Again, YvonnePointer.com. You can see more about her testimony and learn more about it and pray for her and see where she can be speaking next and such. But the godmother of the show, Yvonne Pointer, will be back. Yes. Very yes, soon. she will. Yes, thank you. Hey, hold up. Where are you going? You know you liked your time with us. You want more. So look down, hit that button right there, subscribe, and you'll get updated episodes, and then you can hang some more. And guess what? You can help us. How? A five-star rating. You can also hang with us live Weekday 6 to 9 a.m., interact with us, talk with us, download the Moody Radio app. Or at brianandjanelle.org. And we don't put all this together all by ourselves. There's some great people behind all this production. We want to thank Ron Eastwood, Kelly Ryder, Paul Carter, Doug Hayner, Mike Reynolds, and our awesome and fearless leader, Josue Villa. And finally, this podcast is a production of Moody Radio in Cleveland, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute. Well, Brian, that's a wrap. Yep.